Welcome back, I'm back. And uh, tonight we're going to get started on PlayStation Underground demo discs. So, this is going to be very familiar uh, format-wise because this is kind of what the PS2 uh, PlayStation Magazine demo discs uh, became once they started. And the reason why PlayStation Underground demo discs kind of died out. Uh, basically, the, the PS1 PlayStation Magazine demo discs were pretty much just game focused. You know, uh, here's the demo, uh, here's a video demo, and that's it. But this is going to have a lot more of like the interviews and the memory card downloads and stuff like that. Um, each issue came in this lovely foldout and uh, is two CDs worth, yes, I know, two CDs worth of stuff. Um, I think, and, and they, they're kind of numbered like 1.1, 1 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 2.1, 2.2, 2 .2, because they come out once a quarter. Um, they go up to 5.1. Um, 4.4 had one PS1 demo disc and one PS2 demo disc. 5.1 was just purely PS2. And then after 5.1, they just kind of stopped doing it and just continued doing the uh, um, PlayStation Magazine stuff. Um, one thing they really enjoyed doing with these, though, was hidden codes. <laughs> um, and uh, I did actually look forward at um, 1.2, the next episode, and, or the next volume, and I got the, uh, the codes, they, they basically tell you what the hidden codes were from the previous disc, just right out in the open. So, I looked ahead, I have those, uh, like I took a screenshot of them so we can play around with those, and, uh, you know, get a good complete look at both disc one and two. So, should be interesting. This is going to take quite a while, because basically what we're going to aim to do is one volume per night. So 1.1, 1 .1, uh, disc one and two. Next week we'll do 1.2, disc one and two. Um, we'll get through uh, season one, I guess. Uh, by the end of this month, so that'll be a nice clean cut. And then uh, we'll keep going through the rest of them in January when we pick up normal programming again. Um, because in December, I'm going all in on DL Um Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. We're not going to do anything else. <laughs> um, I, I just kind of want to actually have that focus for a, a little bit. And uh, I've got a couple of things planned. I put together all the, the um, thumbnails and everything uh, last night, so we're all good to go there. But yeah, so another uh, phase in this whole uh, project here. And uh, definitely looking forward to it. So, let's get started. Also, welcome back, Polymega. It, it arrived Wednesday or Thursday of last week after uh, getting sent in for some repairs. Um, there was a minor um, manufacturing defect that made it so that the modules wouldn't work anymore. And... Uh, it was pretty painless. I, I let them know that it, I needed to have it repaired. They uh, sent me a label and or gave me a label to print out, and I 
sent the thing to them and it took about two, two and a half weeks for them to uh, troubleshoot it, fix it and replace and uh, return it to me. And everything was still on the hard disk, so I didn't have to reinstall anything. That was nice. And I've been able to uh, uh, confirm that the module does work again. So yay, I have a fully functioning Polymega again. So we are going to go ahead with and um, so you've got PSU PS Underground 1.1.1. That's you know season one, uh, quarter one, disc one. We'll have to switch discs later on, but makes sense. <laughs> Hmm, I didn't get the, uh, BIOS boot thing. Okay, so the red E thing was a, uh... Enabled? You gotta be kidding! I've got nothing but snow here! What's going on? I thought we had a lock. I don't know. <laughs> PlayStation <laughs> under Underground-wise ass. The, tower, the was <laughs> up and looking good, then nothing. Hey, what's happening back there? We lost the whole transmission. Hold on, hold on. I'm running a system diagnostic. Hard drives are fine. The network's still up. Modulation is within limits. Let me check this satellite. Got it. Tracking is off. I'm gonna realign. We'll dial it in and let's get back online. We don't want underground members seeing this snow when they try to get the transmission. Uh, you've got the wrong bird. Unless we're transmitting Spunko's hey, commercials. Hey, better on. to be a, a wise ass than a dumb ass. Okay, I'm reestablishing the lock. Picture should be clearing up. All right, there we go. Has as much to do with uh, Penn State University as. Um, PMS has to do with Proctor Middle School. Okay, so we are going to start with tech Q&A. Um, like with the uh, uh, PlayStation Magazine stuff, I want to start with what uh, is um, non-playable as much as possible. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, so the red E thing, the you are not red E thing is uh, something I used for the uh, season six trailer. How is a PlayStation character created? Our games tested and bugs caught. Who thinks up games? Why are PlayStation CDs black on the bottom? This is your chance to get technical questions answered. Send them to us at underground at interactive.sony.com or by letter to this address. We can't answer everyone's technical questions, but we'll respond as to as many as possible. In each issue, we'll explore the most interesting questions here. Okay. That didn't really do anything, but there is something hidden in this section. So we're going to go back in. Uh, so unfortunately, nothing interesting, but the code is square triangle circle. Get some code or some uh, cool moves or something for cool borders. There are two other courses that can be earned, Special and Extra. To gain access to Special, beat the first place times for Novice, Advanced, and Expert from the ranking screen. To gain access to Extra, beat the first place trick points for Novice, Advanced, and Expert from the ranking screen. To gain the best border in the game, beat the official time and trick from Special or Extra course in one run. When this is done, Snowman will appear on the board select screen. Nice. So yeah, that was an example of one of the codes 
um, basically on this screen you press square, triangle, circle, and it gave us that little tidbit. All right. Go to debriefing. Interview with Dave Jaffe, producer, designer, Sony Interactive Studios. What inspired Twisted Metal? Twisted Metal was really inspired, I think, by... Oh my god, uh, babyface uh, Dave Jaffe. A fellow designer, Mike Yam at Sony. Uh, our, our, it was basically inspired by our, our deep love of action movies. Um, you know, a lot of critics, I think, and people sort of say, you know, do we really need another car chase and things like that? And everyone's always bashing on car chases, but we love car chases. And... Uh, you know, what we really wanted to do with Twisted Metal was sort of... I wonder if there's a way for me to, and, you know, as importantly, give ourselves the grab the video files off the uh, disc and, and get them on YouTube, kind of like what I've been doing with the cool moves on the PS2 discs. Uh, or the French Connection. That was really the whole uh, creative inspiration. And then it just happened to come along at a time uh, when the technology was right, when we met with our developers single track up in Utah. Uh, that was really the first time that we had really experienced uh, affordable 3D that, you know, your home consumer could buy. And we realized that, you know, that that idea, that inspiration for sort of wanting to put the player in a Hollywood action movie could actually finally be done, uh, you know, via this really cool technology, which allowed you to actually live in these worlds and things like that. So. Was it everything you wanted? Um, the first one wasn't. The first one was... Uh, I think the first one had all the heart that we wanted it to have. I mean, the first one is very much uh, sort of like we always compare it to sort of like a garage band version of, you know, what ultimately the game ended up being, which is Twisted Metal 2. The first one had all the heart that we wanted it to have, but it ended up, it lacked a lot in terms of presentation, gameplay, things like that. But uh, it wasn't until the second one that we were really able to uh, make the game everything that we originally intended. What are you most proud of in Twisted Metal 2? Um, again, I'd, I'd have to say the gameplay. Um, you know, there's a lot of things in Twisted 2 that I'm real proud of that I think a lot of, that everyone involved with the product really, uh, you know, put into it and, and should be proud of. But the most important thing to me about any game, and especially Twisted 2, is, is just the jump in gameplay from 1 to 2 and the fact that, uh, you know, especially when you're competing with a friend and you're fighting with a friend, uh, it's just, it's such a richer experience. Um, there's so much more strategy, so much more depth to what you can do that uh, I think that's the thing that, that I'm really most proud of, that we were able to, to learn what it takes to, to get that gameplay and figure out how to execute it. How is Twisted Metal 2 different from Twisted Metal? I think the biggest leap was just, uh, I mean, I think gameplay says it all. I think it was just a real, Twisted Metal 1 was my second game. Uh, as a designer, it was the developer's first game as a developer, and, uh, you know, in that learning time between Twisted 1 and Twisted 2, we really began to understand what it means uh, to have good games. That's pretty impressive that that was, like, his second game ever. Things like that that really make players stay with the game, um, whereas Twisted Metal 1 was, it almost felt more thrown together uh, than, than the second one, so gameplay, I guess, would be the key thing. What's best about your job? You know, I really like mapping. Um, I think mapping is just, you know, the the uh, the key to what it means to be a designer. And of course, you driving know, your enemies uh, before you and hearing the lamentations of their women. With myself or with my fellow designers or fellow development team, and, and just really sit there uh, with all these markers and figure out what the level is going to look like, or figure out what the strategy is in the level, or what the game. Saturn is sucks. Is oh, oh. That really is the, is the harsh. You get to let your imagination run and was that a topless woman drawn on their uh, on their whiteboard? Later, you get to see that that you know terrible looking stick figure map on your whiteboard in your office is now translated into a playable video game uh, with great graphics and sound and, and playability. So that I think mapping would be the, the most fun thing that I do. What's your work day like? I you know I don't really have an average day uh, in the sense that every day I you know I come in and. I shut my door and I design for two hours and then after, you know, it, it, it's not that structured at all. all. All of my days are basically centered around 
uh, making sure that the game that I'm working on at the time, and I only work on one game at a time, uh, is it, it, all the elements are, are being poured into it. And, and some days I don't mean that I'm I think I have. all day long for a certain level of the game. None of the Rayman games, games really stuck out to me. The developers of the game uh, or the artist trying to figure out who the characters are that, that live in the world of the game. Uh, all the way up to, you know, dealing with uh, marketing, who's trying to come up with a great slant for the ad in the magazines or television, or working with the testers to try to figure out where all the bugs are to make sure we can release the game on time. So uh, it's, it's just a whole, you know, I don't know, uh, amalgam, I guess, of things that I do. But the cool thing about my Was that the one that was on the Dreamcast? I get this great variety of stuff that I get to do, but it's all centered around one thing, which is making a, a really great game. What about violence in video games? I think if you look at the games I've done, if you look at Twisted Metal 1, Twisted Metal 2, uh, the game I'm working on now, you know, it, 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 it's very apparent what I think about violence in video games. I think uh, I, I have no problem with it. I mean, I, I, I feel it's a way, it's an outlet uh, for, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a release, I think, for <laughs> the uh, things that we have inside. I think it's crazy if, 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 if someone tells you that you know, uh, you know, we are not violent creatures, you know, and I, I would much rather rip someone's head off in a video game and get it out of my system than do it in the real world. Um, and I think it allows that. I think it's one of the few mediums that does allow that. <laughs> nice disclaimer at the bottom of the screen. What game do you wish you had designed? There, there's a game uh, came out a while back called Flashback, uh, which came out with a 16-bit system. Okay, yeah, Flashback was a good one. That was really the first time ever uh, that I had played a game that really immersed me in that world. I mean, for however long it took me to finish that game, I was there. You know, I was in that world, and that I think is is, is something that I hope that I. I never got very far into Flashback, but I've given it a couple of tries. Gameplay in worlds that just totally suck them in and make them forget where they are. Um, so I would say it would have been Flashback. Um, I mean, today there, there are certainly games that are doing that very well today uh, on PlayStation and other systems, just some wonderful games out there. But I think Flashback really for me was the first one that did it and uh, it sort of holds that ranking in my you know, mind as the greatest game of all time, uh, which I wish I would have done it. And I hope today one day I can do it. Anything you'd rather do for a living? I would love, well, I don't know if I would love to because usually what I... Uh, I usually find that when you actually get into the job that you think is so great, it turns out to be really great, but there's a lot of hard work with it. So I don't think there's a perfect job out there. Uh, <laughs> I love what I do. Uh, I, I wouldn't trade it uh, for anything. And in fact, I would, uh, as long as my bills were paid and I could take care of my family, I you know, would do it for free. Um, but I would, you know, I, I'd like to see myself doing comic books one day. I'd love to, I can't draw it all, but I'd love to write comic books. Uh, how do you become a game designer? There's a couple things I would say. Um, one is that it really isn't, at least at this point in time, that hard to get into the industry. Um, you know, at an entry level point, either through being a tester, being an artist, being a programmer. I mean, if, if you really want to get in, you will find. I think it's even easier now. And, and give you a, a secret way in because there isn't one. It's basically if it's something you want to do, you'll find a way to do it. What I will say is that. Be able to distinguish yourself from being a fan, which is a wonderful thing to be, um, from being a game maker. And they're entirely two different things. And I see a lot of people come in and they're huge. I've done a lot of beta testing of games. Game, That's always really fun. Don't care so much about what goes into the game. They just want to regenerate. So not like, you know, officially getting paid tester, um, but still so really trying out pre-release games and, and giving feedback. Games, That's fun. Make something fun out of it, and you know the excuses of well, I don't have a SGI machine, and I don't have a you know 200 megahertz Pentium. I mean, you know, I understand <laughs> what it means to make. I don't have a 200 megahertz Pentium. Pentium. <laughs> I understand why there's as much technology in Street Fighter 2 as there is chess in Street Fighter 2, and those are the things I think that the, that the game business really needs is people who understand gameplay. So I would say that. Um, Learn what game making is, make sure you really want to make games, and then just find a way to get in and keep pushing, uh, and don't let anyone discourage you, because it's certainly doable, you know, hell, you know, as they say, if I did it, you know, anybody can do it, so. How did you break into the gaming industry? I, 
you know, I, I never really uh, intended to get into the game business. It was uh, really a, a, a total fluke. Um, I had always played games as a kid and stuff, and I'd always been a video game fan, but my initial intention was to go into filmmaking, and uh, you know, I'd gone to film school and all that, and basically the video game thing kind of happened while I had just gotten out of film school, and I was sort of waiting for, you know, the call from Steven Spielberg or George Lucas or something, and, uh, you know, in the meantime, I figured it would, you know, I needed to eat, you know, and make money and stuff, so I uh, had heard about this job as, you know, game testers, which basically what I thought at the time, which is not the case, that all they did was sit around all day and play video games, so I figured, oh, this will be something <laughs> to, you know, bide my time and make some money, uh, you know, until I get to make movies, and I kind of fell into it like that and got the job from Sony back when Sony was Sony ImageSoft, and, uh, you know, once I got there, I started seeing the potential of uh, the next generation of video games and seeing how, as game designers, we can take games beyond the simple side-scrolling, you know, stuff uh, that we had been seeing for the last five or six years and really take players into a new, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, sort of a new direction of fun in, in gameplay. So, you know, since then I just sort of haven't looked back. I just started as a tester and kept going. It was, real, it was an accident, really. All right. That was a lot of interesting stuff. Again, it's kind of funny to see, you know, such a baby-faced Dave Jaffe. He's a, he looks like a mountain man now. <laughs> Behind the scenes. The making of the Twisted Metal 2 commercial. You may have already seen this. <laughs> Style. Sophistication. The ability to launch napalm into oncoming traffic. <laughs> if these are the things you look for in an automobile, it's time you test drive Twisted Metal 2. <laughs> I love that. Two rocket launchers and the new APS flamethrowing system. All standard. Drive the 1997 Twisted Metal 2 on PlayStation from Sony and let style be your weapon. I don't remember that commercial. That is beautiful. The underground has asked me to give you an eyewitness account of the making of the Twisted Metal 2 TV commercial. I'm David Bamberger, the product manager for Twisted Metal 2, and I accompanied the film crew to Prague and saw how they captured the look and feel of a luxury car ad. Prague was the perfect city. It's located in the Czech Republic and has a rich, glamorous feel that we were looking for. We were lucky to find Monique locally. But to get the properly arrogant male lead, we had to import Timothy from England. <laughs> he actually turned out to be a nice guy. Of course, the real star of the ad is this fully loaded, heavily armed car. Style. Sophistication. The ability to launch napalm into oncoming traffic. Of course, a missile launcher wasn't a standard feature in these big American cars, so we added one. Oh, that's so cool. Instead of using a computer composite, we used a real explosion to get the reflection you're about to see in the actor's glasses. launch napalm into oncoming traffic. If these are the things you look for in an automobile, it's time you test drive. <laughs> This next scene was really tough. Our model had a hard time overcoming the urge to run from the gunfire. <laughs> with each blown take, the door had to be rebuilt with fresh explosive cans. I know! That was a good one, though! With only one door panel left, she pulled it off perfectly. <laughs> Poor lady. Seven Twisted Metal 2 on PlayStation from Sony. This is one of the last shots we did because the flamethrower actually melted the hood of the car. Oh, jeez. And let style be your weapon. The crew somehow found this big American car in Prague. They worked on it nonstop for a week and turned it into this twisted metal weapon of mass destruction. 
It wasn't street legal when we bought it, and it certainly wasn't street legal after. <laughs> there's your inside look, and remember, drive angry. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, got the making of NFL Game Day 97. Doo -doo -doo. Jim Brown. Tim Brown came into our motion capture studio, and the result you can see in the game, the smoothest animation in a football game today. That kind of stuff just, just blows you away, really, to see how they could take you running and put it on the screen and, and uh, fill it in with animation or whatever, and, and it ends up being uh, a little football player in the game doing exactly what you were doing. So what it does is it, for each frame, it will go through and it will figure out where each of these dots actually were. They really don't mean anything until you start moving them. And once you start moving them, you can see basically where the hips and the knees and the ankles and all the joints are. And voila, you end up with a stick figure. You want to have a left foot, right foot, left foot, so that you can take that in cycle. It was really fun to be here with these guys and to see how much uh, they really put into uh, making sure that these games are exactly how the guys are doing on the field. One play in the game, you draw it anywhere you want, no implement it, you draw it. Well, this is a hat, this is I'm very, very excited I was just trying to figure out what I uh, it's be a this time. little Especially if you have the right black a bit was <laughs> that's peeking up over the back of the chair. It's just the color of my coat on the couch behind me. <laughs> that's it, baby! Okay, we do actually have a code here. Press all four shoulder buttons. Game day Easter eggs. All right. Uh, are these codes that we're supposed to enter? Scrambler, GD Challenge, Genius, and Pinball. All right, well, that's something at least. Okay, next up, we have our download station. I love that fizzle out effect. That's pretty cool. Carnage Heart is one of the most in-depth strategy games ever created. It took Japan by storm a year ago and has just been unleashed in the U.S. by Sony Computer Entertainment America and ArtThink. The object is to design and program overkill engines to attack and conquer enemy bases. Select na Download Now and get special Carnage Heart save data to use within the game. The data gives you 25 different OKEs to use or challenge created by the game's designers. They're especially tough to beat. Good luck. That's kind of neat. Is that... Uh, let's read about the designers and the OKEs. Okay. Iron Man Squad. Creator Masaki Iz Izuka. The squad will not lose about against land-based OKEs. Iron Man Mark One, all that stuff. There's the You Are Not Red E thing on the lower right again. Supreme Combat Squad Unit, creator Hisao Yamada. 
Hot Fist is a fighting OKE. Although it has missiles, they are not programmed to be used. You can call this my basic OKE. Hot Claw backs up Hot Fist with its laser. You can call it a support robot for Hot Fist. All right. I've never actually played this game, so none of this really makes a lot of sense to me, but it's cool that they're going into so much detail. Brutal Vehicle Unit by Hisao Yamato again. This unit consists of only tank-type OKEs. They do not approach enemies, but attack from a distance. Both are based on the same program. The hardest part in programming this OKE was to make them face the enemies sideways in order to dodge the enemies back and forth. Okay. Ooh, that's not good. I hope everything works out. Pink elephant. Nice. Crab general. Intensive Firing Squad. The name of this unit comes from their ability to launch rockets from the sky and create a sea of fire. When they approach enemies, they intensely launch rockets. If the rockets hit their targets, you can see a dynamic result. The reason I chose the Valiant body type is because it is the only flying body type that can be equipped with rockets. Okay. A Hug 7070. <laughs> Steady Mechanized Unit. The, the name Sidestepper comes from the fact that they move by jumping sideways. This machine was created by adding further programs to, to attack the opponent Hot Fist. I've spent a lot of time on this machine and as a result I feel a lot of attachment towards it. Their attack pattern is to approach the enemies and shoot their shotguns. Well, that's good to hear. Overbearing Force Unit. The name for this OKE comes from their attack method, where they shoot shotguns continuously and destroy enemies by pushing them up against a wall. Both OKEs are based on the sidestepper model weighed heavily on attack. It was a challenge to create the dodging routines. So this is interesting. It sounds like... Um, sounds like a mixture of like front mission but you can actually program the ai of your of the bouncers for lack of a better way of putting it anti-aircraft tank unit i wanted to design a cougar okay rather than a rather unpopular body type capable of battling against flying okes that's where the name flybuster came from the attack pattern they use is to spread floating mines in a wide area but most of the time they are destroyed before spreading all of the mines they have. Oops. Oh, that sounds awful. I've never experienced that. I have experienced wood ticks in my youth, but um, yeah, never fleas. Dreadful self-destructors created by Shin Matsudaira. Moonwalker 13, named after Apollo 13, attacks as it approaches enemies. Yeah, but Apollo 13 never actually made it to walk on the moon. Eh. When it reaches a certain distance, it shoots scatter mines, then moves back. Crab Teacher walks like a crab to the left, but never attacks allies. Maverick supports Crab Teacher from the sky. Melon Storm 96. I see what you did there. I call the round scatter mines death spheres melons. Super Bomber approaches the enemies and scatters the mines. Since it goes very close to the enemies, its armor plate is thick. 
This okay, he boasts extensive missile dodging programming. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, Xbox Series consoles have it built in now, and uh, it's coming to PlayStation early next year. Oh, yeah. Hodai A-Team, creator Atsushi Onuma. I named this machine Hodai Special because it attacks enemies from a distance without approaching them. It's an offensive type machine. It attacks without letting enemies approach you. The programming is actually quite simple. Ah, the Hug 9090 thing is the engine. Got it. Bowling Team, created by Masashi Saito. I named this OKE Bowler because it shoots, at the, shoots out the rolling Scattermind's Death Sphere. It attacks enemies at close range, so if it cannot get close, to, close enough to its enemies, it cannot win. Friar. These OKEs are named after the fact that they continuously shoot shotguns and protect themselves like hedgehogs. A well-balanced machine for attacking and dodging. Yeah, that's what I've been seeing too. Um, and, you know, also looking at stuff like the PlayStation 5 starting to speed up, it sounds like most of the... Uh, Supply chain issues have been resolved. Or at least lessening. Purple Blaze, created by Kunihiko Shimazaki. These are named after their purple bodies and blue lasers. I created this OKE to counter the Crab General. They just keep shooting. They don't care what's behind them. If you can understand the programming of these machines, you're a genius. Oh, yeah. Like, my Polymega handles most of, you know, you know, what it can, and I generally don't tend to play the same games on the Steam Deck. Red Blaze. This is my third revision of Red Blaze. The name Moon Hegemony, Hegemony means that they have mastered anti-air battles and therefore have conquered the moon. They start moving after spreading all of their minds. See if you can beat Red Blaze with a flying type OKE. It often runs out of fuel, however. This guy went all in on his creative naming of his uh, Mac Squadron. Blue Blaze. The programming of these OKEs is the same as Purple Blaze. These are actually sly machines because they scatter mines, go back, and stay still to invite enemies to the mines. They are not good at fighting machines that shoot them from a distance. Okay, it looks like there are two different types of blue blaze here. Eh, looks like it's the same thing though. Furunashi unit, created by Yasu Yasukazu Katsumata. Furunashi means rotten corpse in Japanese, but that's not how I named this unit. Furun Furanshi, oh, Furanshi, oops, is the unit leader's name. The concept of this OKE is the same as the ones in the headquarters address unit, but this one is better balanced. Soon after it shoots missiles, it shoots the shotgun. It's programmed so that either one will hit enemies. So I think this is going through like all 25 of the units that get downloaded. <laughs> oh, and now we've got the headquarters address unit. From my loyalty to our company, I named this OKE after our headquarters address. It only shoots the shotgun. 
Although it has a small CPU, it's a well-rounded machine. You can refer to this one when you program your own. That's cool. <laughs> 261 Chiba J Japan. Nice. Elvagas Ar Aramaki Group by Jun Suzuki. Oh, hey. I know that name. The name of these OKEs comes from acting rough in Japanese. They certainly are rough and aggressive. They overwhelmingly shoot lasers for long range, shoot rockets from middle range, and grapple for short range attacks. But please do not use scatter mines on them. It'll hurt them if they step on mines. <laughs> Aramaki kun. Jupiter Mobile Unit from Ken Savada. These machines are named after their completion date of 125, but after all it was 124. These machines avoid enemies first, then attack next. I followed the basics when I programmed these machines. They have a tendency to move toward the right edge, which is a problem. Okay, then we've got the option to download, which we don't necessarily want to do here. But I'm glad that they didn't just keep cycling through and that they actually ended the, uh, you know, came back out to the main screen. We do have something hidden here, though. R1L1, R1L1. I think I did that right. Oh, I just probably did it too slow. Ah, oh, it's a video for Blasto. <laughs> Yummy fruity pebbles in my bowl. <laughs> ho ho ho, I'm ho ho hungry. <laughs> Fuck you, now it's in, stuck in my head too. <laughs> Oh, so that's how Phil Hartman died. You are not ready. Oh, that was nice and cryptic. Okay, on to the next section. The event center. E3 is America's largest trade show dedicated to the video game industry. You might have read about it in gaming magazines and maybe even seen a few pictures. But now, through the use of time-lapse photography, the underground takes you for a quick look inside E3 and the making of Sony's outrageous booth from the ground up. No worries. Welcome, by the way. <laughs> watching a video from uh, Top Hat Gaming Man earlier about the Sega Saturn. And he mentioned the uh, mic drop 299 moment. That's like my favorite gaming industry moment of all time because it's just hilarious. <laughs> I 
Yay, Soul Edge. Tobol number one. Actually have that game. I think that was Crash 1. Bubsy, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, so far, um, if you can figure out how to make uh, um, 3D Dot Game Heroes work past, like, the first couple of minutes, that would be fantastic. Because I keep trying it and it keeps crashing or freezing up shortly after you uh, get control of your main of your main character which kind of sucks because up to that point it plays beautifully and then uh, the only other PS3 game I've tried was Tokyo Jungle which uh, has some weird lighting issues but otherwise plays nicely All right, next up we have bulletins. Black market stuff. Oh. Coming soon, cool things to wear and use that carry the PlayStation Underground logo. A signal to other gamers that you have access to inside information available nowhere else. Details next issue. That would be cool. I wish I could... Wish I had some of those. <laughs> Artwork needed. So, you think you have talent? How could you get started in game art? Or perhaps you're just a beginner and would like one of your pictures to appear in this magazine. Send us pic images you've created of PlayStation characters. A panel of industry professionals will review all entries and select their favorites for display in future editions. Your work could be there, be what they pick. <laughs> prizes consist solely of inclusion in a future PlayStation Underground CD. No cash or material prizes will be rewarded. Nice. There's no codes in the bulletin board. Tell us what cool and what sucks about this first transmission. And tell us what you'd like to see in future issues. If you like, grab a video camera and record your comments. You can also record yourself showing off with your PlayStation, or make any sort of offbeat video about it. We might include portions of your video in a future issue. Yeah, back when, you know, you actually really had to work at getting a video recorded. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the compatibility list, and it's just one of those things where, damn it, that's like the main game I'd want to be able to play. I wasn't able to get uh, uh, 
saved game even loaded. <clears throat> Subscribe now. The hottest demos, codes, interviews, and tips delivered fresh to your door every three months. To keep these CDs coming, fill out the subscription form in your CD booklet and drop it in the nearest mailbox or call toll-free. Music, 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 music! The CD isn't the only one with cool hidden stuff. Somewhere on the second CD you received are music videos from two hot bands, courtesy of Sony Music. Find them if you can. I have the codes. But those would probably get blocked on Twitch. <laughs> oh, it's the legal shit. Okay. All right, so that's it for the bulletin board. Get the next transmission. So, you want interviews with developers? Demos of the hottest new games? Codes? Tips and tricks you can't get anywhere else? Cool black market underground gear. Nod your head, yes. To get all that four times a year, <laughs> you gotta subscribe to the Underground Magazine. <laughs> and to subscribe, you gotta have a plan. Here's the plan. Get up off the couch. Step over the coffee table. No, no, don't look away. Walk through the dirty laundry. It is critical that you make no eye contact here with anyone, or they will try to make you pick things up. Don't even think about picking up. Move towards the front door. You know, where you keep the mail? Finally, you're at the door. Think back to when you picked up the mail. You saw the underground CD, so you threw the rest of the mail aside. Concentrate! You ripped open the expensive, well-planned mailer, trashed it, opened the jewel case, ignoring all design hours, spent creating it, and just tossed it, only to grab out the CD. The CD case. The subscription card inside the front cover. Where did you throw it? On the floor? In the trash? Crushed in the doorway? Find it, and the cool stuff, the games, the codes... The power! ...can all be yours. Find the subscription card. Fill it out. Don't screw up. This is a great plan. In fact, subscribe and you are automatically eligible to win some pretty cool stuff. Anyone can enter. A subscription is not required. See the booklet in your CD case for details. That was bizarre. <laughs> okay, and then the, we've got the code book. So this, I'm, I'm going to kind of move a little bit quickly through. If you're watching this in the future and you want to see one of these codes, that's great. Um, pause it. I'll, I'll at least scroll through them. But uh, there, there's a crap ton of codes here. Let's take a look at the hot new codes. Psych! Well, at first we were going to print some of the hidden codes and t hints for Jet Moto, Twisted Metal 2, Cool Borders, and NFL Game Day on this page. But after thinking about it, how exclusive would these codes be if the first Underground members posted them on the net immediately after finding them? So we thought we'd make it a little more sporting. Therefore, hidden in different spots in this magazine are codes and hints from the games listed before and hitting the right button combination in the correct area brings them up. So if you're a code demon, you should be able to find them all. But don't worry if you can't. We'll print their location in the next issue so you won't have to ask your friends for help. And that's what I have on hand. Welcome back, Jesha. So yeah, the code archive is actually pretty massive here. So I gotta say, this is actually really quite worth what you would be paying for the subscription. Like you're getting a lot of stuff out of this. I'll have to try the jumping flash codes at some point. Actually have both of those games. Level codes for uh, all of Lemmings. Nice. 
Oh, I've been missing some of the tips here. There's a lot here. I know the whooping snake just cracked me up the first time I saw uh, the first time I saw him. Um I think it's from the movie Abominable. Which was pretty cute. I watched it in my sister's place. But like later that night I clipped the video uh the, the video clip of the whooping snake and started making it into something I could use. These codes have been added to the PlayStation version and are not found in the arcade version. Interesting. Well, I kind of put it together, you know, grabbed the video, tried to uh, crop out as much of the background as I possibly could. Okay, I think I'm just going to go through all of these. I think what I'll probably need to do once I get to this point on the uh, um, website is to um, like screenshot all of these pages. But if you're watching this later on on YouTube, um, and you want to see more of these and don't think that, and, you know, can't find these codes anywhere else, please let me know. And I will dig this out and, uh, provide more, more information. Okay. So we do have a uh, secret code here for download station. No, the code archive. Simple one. Triangle, triangle, triangle. Hint for the snowblind course. On the last jump of a lap, when you're headed back to the archway that is the finish line, turbo off the last big jump and pull your nose up for extra air. You'll end up landing right in front of the start finish line, skipping the whole uphill leading to it. Not only does this dodge the uphill section, but during this big leap, you've got ample time to pull a 99 point stunt, which will increase your acceleration and thereby help your hill climbing for the rest of the race. <laughs> okay. And now we're on to the playable stuff. Um, I think I'm actually going to start with the import here, and then we'll go to the vault. And the import is the original Dynasty Warriors game. So if you're only familiar with, like, Dynasty Warriors 2 and onward from the uh, PlayStation 2, it's nothing like the first game. <laughs> Produced by Butt Force. <laughs> they haven't really been separated into their red, green, or, uh, yeah, red, green, and blue bits yet.
Oh yeah, there's definitely some good stuff on uh, PS3. If you haven't played Tokyo Jungle, DOS Nerd, I highly recommend it. It is actually available as a PS3 classic on uh, PlayStation Plus Premium also. Sangoku Musu. So uh, a while back, I made a uh, video where like every 50 KOs, I bumped to the next game in the uh, 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 Dynasty Warriors series. And I actually started with this game. There we go. Final stage. Round one. Fight. Oh, that's not useful. I'm kind of glad that they, uh, Decided to switch the uh, format up for the uh, next game in the series because this is kind of a slow fighting game. Come on. Actually, do something, damn it. Xiao Yun, you son of a bitch. At least I think that's Xiao Yun. And I'm pretty sure I'm fighting Cao Cao. Oh, oh. <laughs> Can I do anything with the shoulder buttons? Holy crap. Okay. R1 was a Musu attack. Stop just flailing around. Yep, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I mean, it looks good for a fighting game from the time, and uh, there wasn't much, uh, like, I guess there were quite a few weapon-based fighters at the time. There is like... No, I want to... I want to go back... Okay, I guess I can't go back to the menu, so... We'll just have to, uh... Restart. Restart. There we go. But yeah, I mean, there was, uh... Um... Samurai Spirits or something like that. And, uh... Or, no, what was that? <sighs> Samurai Showdown. That's what it was. Um... Okay, machine guns, weapons, active weapons, okay. Oh, weird. Squares accelerate, huh? Um, but yeah, and then there was also Soul Blade. 
So they were they were having a good time at this point. It's a twist. Mr. Slam. Warthog. Yeah, let's, uh... Grasshopper. Kind of remember going with Spectre a lot, but I'm gonna go with Warthog. If they let me. I'm surprised I was able to pick whatever, uh machine I wanted. I think I got him. Yeah, it says enemies three. I gotta find some health. <laughs> there we go. Couldn't back up. It sucks. Wonder if this music is on uh, like Red Book Audio. Oh crap. No, 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 no. No. I want the homing missiles. And health. Okay. Yep, I knew I was kind of boned there. Game over. <laughs> kind of weird I couldn't figure out how to go backwards. Okay, next up. Cool borders. Ooh, I get to play Jet Moto. Nice. It's never that big of a fan of the Cool Borders series. Web systems. Remember that though. Web systems. Oh, that's such stiff CG. It doesn't even look like it's cool supposed to be slow and epic. It just looks slow. Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Today we're going to go to the extreme on some of the most insane courses. Well, this way, and you'll be known as the course jump. So let's see some hunts fly. Uh, I, again, I never really got into, uh, cool borders. Uh, I have not been able to select 
any uh, customization in these menus. <laughs> There was one um, snowboarding game on the PS1 Ready? that was kind of fun. I can't remember what the name of it is right now, but I'll check my wish list in a moment. Oh, this isn't too bad. Ow. I couldn't get air. Wait, I was told that the square button was jump. Whoa. Whoa. No. Get going, man. Ow. Come on, give it to me. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> hmm. Well, I guess I didn't write it down. Oh, that's a shame. There was a PlayStation 1 game that was actually pretty fun, but I can't remember uh, which one it was now. Alright, on to Jet Moto. Now this game I played the hell out of. Ah, no problem, Doss Nerd. Thanks for dropping by tonight. Rest well. Okay, there we go. Okay. Dang it. All right, I'll go with Dakota. Didn't do too good at this the last time I had to uh, play the demo, but maybe I can make up for it this time. Yeah, that's not a good way to do that. Oh, come on. Who put that there? Fucking nature. Yep, down to 20th. Kind of a clever uh, track design, though. Uh, it's wrapped back on it on itself, so you have to worry about people coming at you head on. Ow!
Finally took... <laughs> finally couldn't keep going on that, huh? Yeah! <laughs> Track boundary D's. Oh. Yay, I finished tenth. In that, yay, I didn't finish twentieth. <laughs> I don't remember. I played Jet Moto 2 a lot more than I played the original Jet Moto, but they, you know, Jet Moto 2 is basically the only one you need because it's got all of the tracks from Jet Moto 1 hidden inside, which I absolutely love that aspect. All right. Last up is NFL Game Day 97. Hooray. Oh yeah, I was never very I was never good at uh, any of the wave race games. <laughs> um I mean, well, of course. Despite their abysmal performance lately. Oh, we even get to play in Lambeau Field. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty awful. I mean, also, like, just today they lost eight players. So it's like... That's not helpful. That's a name I haven't thought of for a while. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and one more for good measure. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, come on. Third and ten, huh? All right. Fine, I'll do it myself. Fourth and four. Um, ah, there we go. <clears throat> oh, 
Nope, oh, game over. <laughs> wow, that was a short demo. Like, they... They weren't really expecting much to happen there at all. Uh oh. Hmm. I think it doesn't like trying to get back to the main menu, so let's force the issue here. Okay. So, we're done with the vault. There are two more codes left. One, uh, both in the main menu. So first up is circle, triangle, square. Sell your soul. This code exchanges player weapons for health. And minion special. The, this advanced attack lets any car use the mid boss's special weapon. Interesting. You must be firing machine guns while entering the follow. D-pad up, down, up, up. Interesting. Can only be performed if the advanced attack enemy ener energy bar is full. Okay. And then the last code gets us into the credits. Square, triangle, circle, X. <laughs> Was that a Mentos rat thing? We got there. Chicken pot pie. Mmm. Look at all those lovely dev cats. Legal department, bless you. <laughs> oh yeah Is that a lobster? No, it's a hand. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's it for disc one. Now we need to uh, shift over to disc number two. And there are also some codes in here. What I thought was kind of interesting is uh, there's a complete, completely different UI here. 1.3 gigs of action-packed demos, insights into how we make the greatest games on the planet and just plain loads of fun. 
Did you think we could fit all of this onto a one measly disc? So here you go, a second disc full packed with interactive game demos and some secret stuff you'll have to be a code meister to find. Hey, we can't do everything for you. Yeah, well, I've got the codes from the next episode, so we're good. All right, let's go to the coming soon first. Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. Oh, this is playable. Okay. Boogie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Follow me. Follow me. Just a tease for now. An ancient world of 400 more screens and more awesome foes awaits in fall 1997. So someone the other day asked me this if is I've run into like they say the same the demo on multiple discs. This is probably the third or fourth time My I've had Abe. to play this demo. I used to work here. <laughs> well, I was really a slave, like all the others. Then I learned they were gonna turn us into lunch. That's when I knew I had to escape. So, get me out of here and help me rescue the others. I always loved how smoothly it just went right into the gameplay. Ah, triangle. Oops. Okay. Oh, oh, that was close. What? Hold R2, okay. Why'd you make me do that? This demo does have different gameplay, though. Follow me. Oh, damn it. No, that was kind of funny. I have to agree with the slig. <laughs> I never actually finished it. I, I remember playing quite a bit into it, but getting stuck and stopping. Obviously now, if I were to uh, try playing through it again, I'd probably just play the uh, new and tasty remake. All right, this time. Follow me. Follow me. Hello. Hello. Follow me. Okay. Hello, no. Hello, no. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, stay here. Alright. Well, how am I supposed to get this guy to come with me? Oh, I see. Hello. Hello, follow me. Okay. That opened the barrier. Hello, follow me. Hello. Okay, follow me. Okay. Hello. 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 Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. <sighs> Hello. Hello. Follow me. Okay. Fine. Ah! At least I saved someone. A little hard work never killed anyone important. I didn't have to get him to follow me, I just had to... To alert a Modokan, say hello. Only 1,236 re work-related accidents this month. Keep up the good work. <laughs> that was satisfying. Okay. Ew. Well, that makes it tough to... I <laughs> love that everybody's reaction to uh, Abe dying is just to giggle at it. Yeah, all the shrapnel makes it really difficult to pinpoint when stuff's falling. at that time. Alright, so this isn't a reflex thing. This is a keep an eye on the pattern thing. Oops. There's a little bit of momentum to Abe. Like, he finishes the step that he's taking when you release the D-pad. 
And that's what happened there. I'm done. <laughs> All right, next up Jurassic Park Lost World. Ah, just a video. Kind of interesting that you're playing as a raptor here. Who oh, shit? Okay, we've got two codes in the coming soon section here. Yeah, fair enough. Might be interesting if we get a playable at some point. First code is triangle, triangle, triangle. Sneak peek at Resident Evil 2. Caw, caw, bang, fuck, you're dead. Oh, ludicrous Gibbs. Man, I think I'm going to take a walk after the the stream tonight. I haven't really gotten to do that at all today, and I really feel like taking a walk. <laughs> well, it's not going to be outside anymore tonight. It'll be in the parking garage. But... Well, let's see here. What what's the uh, lunch weather look like for tomorrow? I always thought that it was kind of cool that this was divided up into two discs and like two separate campaigns. I thought that was kind of neat. I never did enjoy the, the Resident Evil series, but I'll give them props for that. All right, we got one more code in coming soon. Triangle, circle, triangle, square. Well, all right. See where a little extra digging will lead you? You just found our hidden NHL face-off sweepstakes screen. 
We went to the Pinnacle NHL Fantasy event at the NHL All-Star Game this year to promote NHL Faceoff 97, check out few footage in future issues, and snagged a few goodies to give away. Send us a postcard with your name, age, address, phone number, social security number, mother's maiden name, and tell us what your favorite PlayStation sports ga game is, as well as the code that got you to this screen, and you'll be entered to win two grand prizes and ten first prizes. Send the postcards there. Aww. Entries must be received by May 31st, 1997. Well, I guess I'm a little too late. Okay, so that's it for the uh, coming soon section. In the main menu, we've got a uh, music video, so um, this is going to cause issues for me later on, but we'll look at it now. Triangle, square, circle. You found one of two music videos on this CD and probably worked up a sweat doing it, but you've also turned up a great band to blow off steam with. They're called The Urge, and in the words of one critic, they're a non-stop jolt of musical adrenaline. Their two trombone players, yes, that's right, trombone, have even been known to turn flips while playing on stage. Wow. So sit back, check them out, and let them do the work. This was another instance um, I've, I've mentioned before. I really wish there was a way on YouTube uh, for when there was a, a copyright notice on a video for you to request permission through their tools. Um, because, I, I mean, if I was like, hey, I'm trying to archive this stuff, uh, would you be okay with this being part of, uh, the archival footage? I don't think they'd have a problem with that, especially for a music video that's 25 years old. <laughs> I mean, they might even be like, wow, Hey, we didn't even know if a copy of that still existed, you know, or something like that. <laughs> I mean, granted, it's not the best resolution, but it's still kind of cool. They do look like they're having fun with this, though. That's always great to see. I like the beats and shouting. Hey, that guy's eyes were open. He was watching the camera. I have to say, it is pretty unique to hear the trombones as part of, you know, 90s grunge band here.
Receiving the gift of flavor. All right, let's go over to in stores now. Oh, there's that Carnage Heart game that uh, they gave us downloads for in the first issue. Good. I, I was actually kind of curious about this game. Because it, uh, it sounds like it might be kind of interesting. I know that logo from uh, Tale of the Sun. Zap! I have to say, though, that a lot of the stuff that they've been focusing on with this is not stuff, not a lot of the stuff ha was uh, on the PlayStation Magazine demos. So like the, uh, you know, Carnage Heart, for example, there's a lot of stuff for Carnage Heart on this on in this issue, but it wasn't mentioned in any of the PS1 uh, magazine demos. OK, tactics. Deploy units. No units ready. Okay. Formation of battle units is conducted here. Alright, let's let's try the auto here. Because that's probably going to be our best bet right now. Ah, mostly what I chose. All right, cool. Okay, so this is where I could build new units. Or design. Negotiation. Purchase blueprints to create more powerful oaks from these companies. Interesting. Okay. Good to know. I wonder if this game is compatible with the, the uh, PlayStation mouse. If it is, I might have to pick it up. <laughs> well, even aside from the fact that it seems kind of interesting. Okay. Um, capture base. what I'm supposed to be doing here. There should be. Unless I'm supposed to... units. Unit one. Defend the base. All right. Can I do something for unit two here? Hmm. I 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ah, okay. Unit 2, auto. You guys go and capture that base. Okay. So now we've got units commanded. End turn. Okay. I see now. We just kind of watch the battle happen. Which I'm not entirely upset about. I can control the camera. I can uh, choose different uh, mechs to uh, focus on. This guy's kind of brain dead. Come on, get him. Are those like aerial mines? I was kind of hoping that, that uh, the battles would go a little bit faster, considering they're so hands-off. But from what I understand, a lot of, like, just from the, the things that we had on the first disc, it sounds like... A lot of the point of this game is you programming your max before you, they go into battle, which is kind of cool. We still have... Yeah. We still have a group defending the base. Okay, good. This is definitely an interesting game. I'm gonna have to put it on my wish list here. Ooh. There was even uh, Carnage Heart EXA on the uh, PSP. And Carnage Heart Portable on the PSP. Uh, let's see here. Do -do -do. Let's see. Oh, that's not bad. On uh, pricecharting.com, the complete price is about 50 bucks and the loose price is about 20. So that puts it, uh, you know, at a decent price, but not a ridiculous price. Yay, we won. We lost a guy, but we won. Okay, let's see if...
Hello? Well, now that's interesting. The system crashed. That's kind of interesting. I wonder what might be causing that. So yeah, I need to reset the Polymega. Be right back. Something about Carnage Heart accept, uh, upset it. <laughs> I'll have to uh, report that to Eric. Yes, the chief technology officer of Polymega's name is Eric as well. Okay, I need to reset the controller. Come on. There we go. Okay. Let's head back in. And we'll just move on to the next demo. In stores now. And on to Tomb Raider. Hooray. Another one of those insanely popular games that I just don't get the appeal. Well, okay. I don't get the appeal now. I understand that it was one of the, you know, first 3D free roaming adventure games, but it really has not aged well. <laughs> There we go. All right, fantastic. Good first impression. We shot a bunch of dogs. I'm glad she auto-aims. Trying to aim on top of the movement in this game would have been just too much. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Well, she gets infinite bullets in her uh, pistols. I think she does have to worry about ammo for other weapons, like shotgun. Interestingly, I don't recall this being part of 
any of the other demos of this game that I've played. Um, do we need to go toward these? Aha! Yes. Come on, shimmy over. Nope, wrong button. Nope. Ah, it's X. Ah. Well, that saves me the trouble. Is that a creepy Dragon Quest slime up top there? Okay. Damn it. <laughs> there we go. That's fine. Probably wanted to fall anyway. Oh, but I wanted to fall here. Well, maybe I can just pull this. Get around to the other side. Hi, Siren. Nope, that didn't do it. Oh well. Moving along. Hi. You gonna come up here? There you are. Hi, Siren. Hi. Yeah, she's a baby. Oh, time's up on the demo, I guess. Settled right down on my lap here. Okay, next up, Mech Warrior 2. I have actually played this before, but I played it with that big honking dual analog. Um, flight stick controller. Summoner. Timberwolf. Yeah, let's go with the Timberwolf. Incoming coded message. The battle for the Devon system has begun. Jade Falcons, Second Jaegers, and First Strike Clusters have set up defensive positions at strategic locations on the surface. We have set up a sensor array dome there to monitor their movements. Code name Sable Flame. 
Planet, Devon's Moon, Macduff. Terrain, Cratered Vacuum, Time, Night. Defend the Sensor Array Dome at all costs. Objectives, Primary, Defend the Sensor Array Dome. Okay, launch mission. Wait, what options do we have? Okay. Um, let's go to easy difficulty. <laughs> Not going to take chances here. Weapon fire. Target select is square. Okay, so X is move forward. Or X is move backward. Triangle is move forward. And then uh, the D-pad is just basically looking around. Got it. What a little purr cat. Satellite. Proceed with first mission objective. Wow, my laser really has a crappy refresh rate. Oh, sweet. Yeah, let's go with that medium laser. Bye bye, Siren. She didn't like all the button presses. Oddly enough, I'm getting thrown off a little bit by the inverted controls here. Somebody attacking my base? Is that what the problem is? This is actually pretty decent. Oops. Yes. I know you're there. Or is that just incoming missiles? Ooh, I like that combination.
dang it. I can't sidestep. Good, good. Getting pretty beat up. Oh, yay. Wow. I'm kind of surprised I managed to do it successfully. <laughs> Mission successful. Center array tomb is secure. You have driven the enemy from the installation and the staff is safe. On the surface of Devon, a battle rages. Jade Falcon units have engaged us on the black sand of the Otsung Plain. The Keshek hopes that our temporary loss of the dome will not hamper our unit's effectiveness below. The Keshek is aware of your actions. Honorable deeds beget praise. Wolf is attempting to re-enter the city of Boreal Town, Wotan. We are busy preparing another defense. A convoy of munitions is en route to a firebase north of the city. The convoy must reach the firebase in order to provide a safe resupply point for troops. All right. Geographic anomaly crystalline forms. Interesting. Escort the convoy to the firebase. Hooray. I hate escort missions. Kind of tore him up. Oh, that is a lot of enemy max. Let's see you hop, you bitch. <laughs> Okay, I think we got it. Oh, it went right over me, you bastard. Down here, you dick. Enemy mech destroyed. There we go. Enemy power up detected. Oh, one of my legs looks like it's about to fall off. Oh, 
that one took some effort. Okay, I think they're almost to the uh, destination. No more targets. Ah, that's how the jump jets work. Okay. I think I'd almost prefer um, aim up and down to be triangle and square and up and down on the d-pad to be uh, move forward and backward because that seems to be how my brain keeps trying to do it okay well that wasn't too bad oh welcome back gonna go up on the back now yep mission successful the enemies attacking the quadrant were stalled and the industrial plant is secure however the garrison has been forced to fall back and regroup your decisive action in the field has been noted by the Keshek. Your skill matched only by your honor. Oh, a little bit of junk on the corner of the screen there. Purr, purr, purr. Okay, you got two more demos to go. Just says Spider. Is that going to be Spider Man? No. No, it's actually a game called Spider. Easy uh, enough controls, at least. Okay. Oh, it's a 2D thing. Oh, jeez. What? Okay, I gotta try that again. Yeah, she's definitely a loaf pillow. And she's hitting my the back of my head with her tail. Okay. Of course because all spiders have missile launchers. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm, I'm digging the fact that I'm a spider with a missile launcher too. And the enemies explode when you kill them, even if it isn't with a missile. That's hilarious. Mech mine. Okay, so... Um... Circle is usually attack. How do I get it down in there? Circle is usually attack, but square ended up being, you know, attack with butt. Whoops. Ah. Oh, well. I, I did a little bit better that time. That was kind of weird. I... 
I wish there was more to the demo. All right. Last one up is Rage Racer. It's part of the uh, Ridge Racer series. Which I've never been very good at, but... They always at least look nice. Rage Racer. Rage Racer. They always have the best UI too. Racers, start your engines and let's get it on. Three, two, one, go! The race is on. No okay, good. Two laps to go. Glad I was able to uh, shift to outside the car. I only like inside the car when I'm... Whoa, okay. I was expecting the uh, drift-tastic um, controls of Ridge Racer. Yeah. Guess this is different. Good. I, I always hate all the drifting in the Ridge Racer. It still takes some getting used to, though. But yeah, I only like... Um, first person view when I'm playing in VR. Otherwise I prefer to have a uh, better like presence of mind of what my car is doing. Good lord hit anything and you just basically stop. Wait, how'd that work? <laughs> there we go. Finally got ahead of that blue guy. Nice time crisis billboard there. Okay. <clears throat> All right, that's one lap down. Oh, okay. Thanks for that shot to the confidence. Okay. So that's all the playable demos. We do have one more hidden video here. <clears throat> it's another music video. And that's R1, L1, R2, L2. You've uncovered one of two music videos hidden on the second CD. You're about to see Genuine, a hot new artist in the R&B world. He's from Washington, D.C., and when he's not singing, he's playing ball or whooping all comers on his PlayStation. His debut album, Genuine The Bachelor, is certified gold. It has cuts you may have heard on the radio called Pony and Tell Me Do You Wanna. Rumor has it he's going on tour soon. Worth seeing? Take a look. So which one of those guys was genuine? My little cat. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Okay, those were some sick dance moves.
I can barely hear his singing over the rhythm track. <laughs> Mixing on this video isn't that great. Ah, uh, back in the day where you could actually smoke indoors. <laughs> Wow. Jeez. Ah, <laughs> oh, curse that male gaze. I mean, look at that. That's disgusting. <laughs> The artist is genuine. Um, I can't remember the name of the song. Yes, that's the that's the song. Ah, itchy eyes. <laughs> okay, that was cute. All right, so that's it for PlayStation Underground 1.1. Uh, we'll go on to 1.2 next Sunday. And uh, tomorrow night we'll be doing um, PlayStation Magazine issue number 83 on the PlayStation Network. Or on the PlayStation Magazine. Yeah. And then uh, Tuesday night... Um, I wanted to take a quick look at the Commodore 64 cartridge for the Evercade, and then we'll dive back into uh, Samurai Legend Musashi. So lots of good stuff coming this week. But uh, for now, ooh, Infamous is actually streaming when I'm ready to raid. I'm going to raid him for a change. He's playing Resident Evil 5 right now. So, thanks to everybody for dropping by tonight. Always appreciate it. Rest well when you do. And in the meantime, enjoy Infamous GM1.